Hello all, welcome to my channel Codify with Sonal. Today I will be uh, starting a new tutorial on AWS Cloud Practitioner. So uh, if you guys want to know how, how to clear and what all to refer for your course details, you can check out my previous tutorial. I'll put it in the I button uh, you can see on the top. So uh, my approach towards this tutorial is a little different. I won't be teaching you the services and giving a lot of this uh, theory lectures, but I would uh, show you the real exam questions, what kind of uh, practice questions you get in the practice test. So uh, due, due to this, what will happen, you'll find a new way of learning that we will learn the services, understand the services, and also you'll be practicing the questions. So you'll be uh, highly prepared for your exam so please don't treat it as dumps it is not a dump but i'll be teaching all the services whatever you see in the questionnaires and let's start so the first question says which of the following are benefits of migrating to the cloud so now why people want to migrate to the cloud right that's the first most important question what you will uh, get in your mind when you start studying cloud so is it some that you're getting some discounts on Amazon? Obviously not, right? So, and moreover, you'll uh, want to increase your staff retention. You want to retain your staff or something? No. And whereas business excellence occurs, business excellence is about how you can, you know, improve your business in terms of like, uh, how to manage your business and all so that's not what aws does not manage what you have to do in your business okay now coming to operational resilience what do you mean by this term let's see this term first so operational resilience means giving you security giving you safety and continuity of operations so what happens is uh, due to some uh, disaster or whatsoever, AWS has such mechanisms through which your business can even run in disaster uh, problems. So it has highly managed services which you can use to have secured, safe and continuity of operations. So definitely why you want to move to cloud, you want to have operational resilience is one. And as our answers, our uh, question suggested, give us two answers. So let's see what is business agility. So uh, now uh, business agility, agility means what change. So AWS can easily adapt the change in less time and reduce the cost without affecting your quality. So that's the best part, right? You want to reduce your cost without getting the quality affected will attract you most more consumers, customers basically. So yeah, so our answer to this question is operational resilience and business agility. Next, now which AWS service or feature allows users to connect with and deploy AWS services programmatically? Option one. Uh, AWS Management Console? No. Why? Because AWS Management Console is your service console through which you manage your AWS services. It will not allow you to, you know, programmatically manage the thing. No. Cloud9. Cloud9 is basically our AWS Cloud uh, IDE, which lets you code, run, uh, run your code, debug your code with just a browser. Then, SDK, software development kits. So software development kits are the ones which uh, helps you in simplifying your code by providing the JavaScript objects for AWS services. Every language has its own AWS SDK. Java SDK, uh, for Java you have an AWS SDK, for Python you have an AWS SDK. So next we come to code pipeline. So what is code pipeline? It's a fully managed continuous delivery service that helps you automate your release pipelines, fast and reliable application and infrastructure updates. So to users to connect with and deploy AWS services programmatically is code pipeline. Next question. A company wants to migrate its workloads to AWS, but it lacks expertise in AWS cloud computing. Which AWS service or feature will help the company with its migration? 
now what it is trying to ask is that if i want to migrate my company business to cloud but i do not know what is cloud computing i have no idea and whom should i go for help and how can i make my migration smooth and easy so trusted advisor so what is aws trusted advisor they give you some recommendations that help you follow the best practices like you can trust them and they will give you advice how you can have your best practices to follow aws migrations and stuff so this will not help us you know to understand completely how to migrate it will just tell you what are the best practices you can get for aws next coming to artifacts so artifacts are what it is a central resource for compliance related information okay so again that won't help you in the migration process now managed services is what set of services for automating infrastructure management so the correct answer is aws consulting partners they help you design architect build and migrate and manage your applications in the cloud and also the workload they suggest you uh, what way you can migrate your project so the answer to this question is aws consulting partners next question which aws service or tool should a company use to centrally request and track service limit increases okay now every service will be having some limit so before you go to the high bill payments we really want to see how can you limit the services right so what is aws config it is a service that enables you to access audit and evaluate the configurations of your aws resources okay next what is aws service catalog it allows organizations to create and manage catalogs of it services that are approved for use on aws it's like what service does what and how you create and how you manage the service a kind of catalog for that okay like how you have a, a catalog for the products right similarly now budget budget helps you set the custom cost and usage budget budgets so that you get an alert when the threshold are exceeded suppose uh, here you can set a um, alarm also that whenever i exceed 100 dollars so that time i will i should get an alarm so that i know okay fine my budget is being exceeding i need to take care about it so the correct answer to this question is the maximum number of resources that you can create in an aws account you have a service quotas so it gives you a way to centrally request and track service limit increases next which task requires using aws account root user credentials now coming to this viewing the billing information like if i have a, a root account and i have sub accounts for developers for my production people for my uh, qa people if i have different aws accounts okay so anyone uh, who is using my service i can give them the ability to view the billing option okay so for that i don't need okay fine only the root account user has to sign in and check the billing information starting and stopping ec2 instances obviously not ec2 instances are what they are compute instances how you have your computer right so ec2 is like a virtual uh, computer i would say then opening and sub aws support case no if you have uh, encountered any problem in your service you can open a aws support case the team who through which you can talk to and they can help you solve the problem in your service so the main uh, task which requires uh, out of these to use your account root credentials is if you want to change the aws support plan i'll do a detailed video on aws support plans because there are uh, a lot of points to discuss on that so guys let me know how was this session and if you find it useful i'll be creating it more videos ahead and if any one of you wants me to do a real exam uh, questions with a tutorial on solutions architect associate please let me know i'll start i will uh, start a tutorial on that if you have any questions please put it in the comment box below i'll be happy to help you out thank you please like
share and subscribe my channel. Also hit the bell icon to get the notification when I put a new video. Thank you.